TMO, what's pop? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Um, I'm getting ready to watch something that I would find disturbing. I'm not sure if anybody else would. Um, but, you know, I'm going to watch it. Um, this is for Australia. This is for my Australian community and everybody else who's watching if you want to watch it. But um, definitely this is my warning. I don't know how viewers are with, with animals and things of that nature. Uh, don't forget we do got merch and we got a Patreon. We, we watch stuff Monday through Friday. Uh, let's get into this. This is from Best Food Review Show. Like I love this show. I watched this show like at one point. This was, every day was watching this show. It's just super interesting, man. What other cultures do with food and things of that nature all around the world. So you know what I'm saying. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True, true. Talk to me. It all starts with a welcome meal. But considering we're doing this entire... This the Outback. Okay. See, this is the part of Australia that, 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 that I only knew about. Before. Our Australian food series without going to a single restaurant. Our protein must be obtained the old-fashioned way. One of the biggest going as I've seen. Meet Elijah, Aboriginal Australian. Just looking around for a feed. Experienced in taking down wildlife and turning it into food. Bro out here shoeless doing this. You know, he's one with the earth right now. That's tough. We was just looking for a bush turkey, but we couldn't find one. And we just pulled in over there and seen this fellow walking. So we got him instead. This is a goanna. This here is a yellow-spotted monitor lizard, a ground dweller with a sleek, scaly body. They're an Aboriginal favorite, cooked up now as they would have been. Bro, you're not gonna sit here and tell me y'all gonna eat this? Generations ago. No seasonings, no herbs, no marination. Here, it's all about the perfect and precise application of heat. Man, well done with the hunt. So what they, they said, no seasoning? They just eating straight? Very humble. Elijah, what are you doing right now? Just burning the top layer of skin off so it cooks properly in the ground. What is it you like about this meat? Probably the best meat you could ever have. Better than kangaroo? Better than a kangaroo. All right, I can't wait. It's gonna be one hell of a lunch. Humble. Sweet. A ground oven is constructed by digging a hole, spreading some hot cinders, placing the animal on top, then burying it right under the dirt. Add another layer of hot coals on top, then let the earth do its magic. What you mean by that? So there's no seasonings, one, there's no marinade, there's nothing. So we just going straight iguana flavor, and then it got dirt on it? The aroma wafting from the locally turned goana is a surefire indication of its readiness. Once cooked, the goana is laid on a bed of wattle leaves to cool down while any dirt is wiped away. I like there's like two Allen keys right here <laughs> holding the legs back. That's what you call innovation. <laughs> Joining our meal, Clint and Jaden, both with Aboriginal roots. While we're here in Western Australia, Clint will be guiding us through a myriad of off the beaten track food experiences. Usually when I see these, I recognize them as iguanas, but here they're called something different. We call them goanna. When Aboriginal people first learned the word iguana, we just discarded the I and just turned it into iguana. Iguana. Yeah. Now we'll cut the backbone. Oh, it's definitely a little side of flies. Really squishy. It looks like pork belly or something. I thought it would be dry, but it is fatty. There's kind of like a residual soup inside made from all the meat and whatever organs remain. Are there organs in there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is that the liver? Liver and lungs. And that's the fat. Oh, oh yeah. You're ripping the tail off now. Yep. Oh, that is like really pure white meat. Oh, <laughs> oh take a look. You funny. It don't look bad. I'm gonna be honest with you. It look okay. Like now that like it's away from the rest of the body and things of that nature. 
Oh, it looks like chicken like breast, alligator. but like even more white. And do you eat the skin at all? No, the skin is really um, tough. Too tough, right? Yeah. Put some on your damper and eat them together. The damper is an incredibly dense staple made popular by colonial ranchers looking for a quick way to make bread. All it takes is flour, self-rising flour, and water. Shape it into a round loaf and toss it over hot coals. You know, I've seen bread charcoal cooking before in India. Actually, they'll take cow dung, dry cow dung. <laughs> Oh, it has no smell. I think after it cools down a little bit, they're gonna throw it on there, cover it up, and then it'll cook all the way through. I see you got plenty of dung around here. Yeah. How about burning that? Nah, nah, man. No? Only, only to keep away the bugs. All right, should we try it out? Cheers. Cheers. I have huge doubts. I have huge doubts. So much stuff is going on right now. And the way my stomach is set up, I'm honestly getting nauseous right now watching. A little fishy. The fat has a little bit of a fishiness to it. It's like chickeny, but more succulent. It's kind of like it's got a barbecue flavor. Like a little smoky? Yeah, a little bit smoky. Mm, the bread. Listen, I came here for kangaroo. Y'all doing this? It's a die for. Who hunted this bread? <laughs> you can see why there's so much uh, hype about this. You know, you can feel it from these guys. <laughs> it was going to be really good. They really had a lot of faith in it. Well, and you can't just roll into a restaurant and order this. It takes work. It takes luck. So when you eat this kind of meal, it's earned. Thanks, Elijah. Thanks, Elijah. Where'd Elijah go? <laughs> right now, we're in Sherlock, a small rural outpost just outside of the not-so-bustling city of Karatha. This is... I'm sorry. Let me fix my face because, you know what I'm saying? This is how the Aboriginals eat, man. You know, salute. You know our traditional land, our family have lived here for up to or over 60,000 years. And this type of food, you know, is what sustained our people. And it's great that even though we're living in a modern day and we can go to the supermarket and buy meat and vegetables and stuff, that we still have the ability to go out on country and hunt like our ancestors did, except, you know, we do it a bit more easier with, you know, rifles and stuff these days. But the technique that we cook it in and all that is still the same. The Aboriginal people are the original in is this FDA approved? inhabitants of this land, with a history dating back thousands of years. The arrival of British settlers in the 18th century had a profound and devastating effect on the Aboriginal communities. This group that once represented 100% of the island's population now only accounts for 3.3%. Today, many- Damn, that's the same with my people, man. Native Americans. I feel it, man. That's why I rock with the Aboriginals. I support anything that they got going on out there. And they still reside in rural areas and towns where they can maintain their traditions. I've seen plenty of goannas, but there's no way I could ever hunt one myself. It's completely illegal. Oh. You know, As just, wild game, like goanna. Just from watching Spaniards' videos, I know how y'all been done out there, man. And my heart's with y'all, man. I know how y'all feel. I know what y'all have turned to. I know y'all all losing y'all traditions and values. Tough. For kangaroo have been part of the Aboriginal diet for thousands of years, their hunting practices are recognized and allowed by Australian authorities. Only Indigenous Australians are allowed to hunt certain animals, but when you're in our presence, you, you're allowed to be a part of that. Also, the, only the Aboriginals are allowed to hunt this, hunt kangaroos out there, but it's completely legal in, 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 the, in, uh, in Australia for them to do so. Okay. Educational. I'm learning. As night falls, the seemingly limitless horizon is cloaked in dark. While Jaden navigates us deeper into the countryside, Elijah and I have been given the crucial task of spotting our prey. So I have a flashlight. So am I looking for a kangaroo or just like the reflection of the eyes? You'll see the whole body shining. Once he turns his head to you, his eyes are they're shining at you. And it's not just going to jump away? Depends on how much noise you make approaching it. Do you usually hunt in this vehicle? Any car. Any car, it's fine. Yeah. Tesla? No. Well, maybe next time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Elon Musk would love T Tesla Cybertruck. There. Silent. As we're going along. If you see a kangaroo with a joey, let it be. Because that's a mother, you know? Oh, you try not to shoot any females? Yeah. But Just the males. But at night when they're so far away? Because they get a pouch. You'll see the pouch. Is it illegal to hunt the females? Uh, not really. We just don't hunt it because so we can breed more, you know? Morally. Okay. Want more kangaroo yeah. meat for tomorrow? Yeah. Got it. Oh, dead rough. On the road? On the road. Yeah, be quiet, be quiet. Don't make a big noise, be quiet. As we approach the kangaroo, Jaden turns off the car engine to avoid spooking the animal. Right there, right there, right there. It looks like a joey. Got 
Bakar. He's gone. Did you hit him? Ah, bloody hell, Mr. Big Kangaroo over there now. What happened? He got spooked. Too much noise. If they're moving at that pace, can you still hit them? Do you have any chance? Nah, that's why we whistle at them. How how uh, fast is a kangaroo at top speed? Curious. So get their attention, they'll, they'll stop. Really? Yeah. Do you prefer the bigger ones or smaller ones? The smaller ones. I find the meat is more softer. That one looked big. Right, right, because it's not as, you know what I'm saying, strong. Kangaroos be looking like bodybuilders. Like they can compete in US, Mr. Olympia or something. Getting ripped, it was like the rock of kangaroos. Bro, do you see this? I've never seen it so dark anywhere in my life. Look how dark it is. Even with the flashlights, the sky is pitch black. I've never seen this in real life. Wait, 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 come on. Hey, I know bullet. I said, oh my God, y'all professionals, how you ain't got no bullet in there? Come on. Is it gone? No. You got him, right? Yep. Wow, dude. Oh my gosh. Quite you know what's crazy? Back when I was young, we used to have the ponytails as well in the back with the long braided piece of hair. Hot and hot, Matt. Oh, right in the heart. Just dead on impact. Nice and fresh. Didn't destroy the stomach. It's a nice male. That's the one you want to hunt. Holy oh, cow. Now, don't just grab bro meat like that. Just dangle bro balls like that's tough. The red kangaroo, also known as the plain kangaroo, is the largest marsupial in the world. It's wild to see something like this because it's a beautiful animal and they've got like an amazing looking body, these big ears like a dog, gigantic thick Achilles, big old paws, giant feet, then this strong powerful tail to balance with. How old do you think this one is? Four years old. Great shot by the way. Yeah, Very smart. patient because it was about to escape behind a bush and you just like waited till you got the shot, perfect yeah. shot and went for it. Well done. And Oh, he's missing the tooth as so well. So before rifles, before flash. He's been through the ritual of becoming a man type situation. Flashlights before trucks, a thousand years ago, how would your ancestors get the kangaroos? They would build a wall and they'll use the wind. When the wind blows, they'll stand behind the wall. So they sent, stop the kangaroo, and then they'll spear if they're drinking the water. So they have to build a wall next to water. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll just use the wind. The wind blowing that way, they'll come. The opposite direction. Opposite direction, direction yep. Yeah. And spirit. And spirit. Oof. That's so much work. All right, let's take it back. Well done, man. It's the next day and excitement is in the air. A group of skilled hands are- I'm not gonna lie, bro. Kangaroo for dinner is crazy to me. Like, I didn't even know this was a thing, but like, uh, after the Spanian videos, y'all y'all said y'all really be eating these. Like, it's, and it's good. Are at work, digging a hole, setting fire to wood. But I would imagine the baby one is much better because the meat is not as, you know what I'm saying, buff, not as strong. And not heating stones muscle. to prepare for our feast. Our cooking grounds lie in a secluded ancient river basin, far from civilization. As Clint and I make our way there with the kangaroo in tow, we stumble upon an unexpected surprise. This is wild. We were just going down the highway and then out of nowhere, the car in front of us hit a kangaroo and it lies right here right now. It died instantly. Yeah. How often do you see that happen? It's actually a common occurrence. It's like deers. Especially around the towns where there's a lot of traffic. Is this kangaroo different from the one yesterday? Yeah, so it's a different species. This one is called a Euro, also known as a wallaroo. It's more a hill-dwelling kangaroo compared to the other one which lives in the plain. It's between a wallaby and a kangaroo? Yeah. Wallaroo. Yeah. Meet the wallaroo, a distant cousin of the legendary red kangaroo and a true Aussie battler. Shorter, stockier, they're perfect for a high-stakes cuddle or, in this case, serving up to a hungry crowd. We don't want to waste the animal, especially if it just died. So a lot of the time, my people will pick it up and we'll take it and we'll cook it. Especially, man, you know, one, 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 this is living off the land. You know what I'm saying? The circle of life. We all learned that in Lion King. This is what I'm watching right now. 
This is very educational. So we've just arrived to the cooking grounds and at this point we have two kangaroos, so we're gonna cook them both. Fortunately, we have basically Clint's entire extended family here helping about 10 people work to cook it together. Right now, they're lighting a big fire so they have a big pile of embers and then all of that is- Hold on, let me see how gruesome. Oh, okay. Gonna cook underground. But we also have some special side dishes cooked up by Clint's mother. Wait till you see this. Like many cultures in history, the cooking style of the Aboriginal people reflects their nomadic lifestyle. The process the hair must off. be quick, efficient, it can't require complex tools, yet the final product has to be palatable in the end. An incision is made in the stomach where the organs are removed. The organs will not be buried, but they will be used shortly. Now, the hot stones. As many as possible are placed inside the body. Once complete, it's stitched up. The kangaroo tails are severed and bound tightly. Now it's time for the roots to descend into their final resting place. Here, men who have done this many times before find the delicate balance between hot sand, cinders, and more sand, ensuring the heat is well distributed. So this is like the underground thing again. That's, how, that's the way of cooking of the aboriginals, huh? In just two hours, both- Probably most like people native to their country cook like this, native to their land, sorry, cook like this. Kangaroos should cook all the way through. I'm counting on our expert cooks to ensure neither of these animals died in vain, but still, fingers crossed. In the meantime, Jaden makes quick use of the recently removed liver. So right here we have the kangaroo liver. Is that a heart too? Liver and heart is good from any animal. Yep, very nice. And you just throw it. I need some seasoning though. Over the charcoal. And it's ready to eat? Ready to eat. But do you ever eat it raw? Yep, it's half raw now. Oh, <laughs> fantastic. Should we go heart first? I like the heart. Which kangaroo is this? This is from the plain kangaroo. Oh, I like it. It's got a little dirt on there for texture. <laughs> a little bit of salt here. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. A little bit of sand. Careful for that. Although it will polish your teeth. It's a pretty neutral flavor. I was expecting it really gamey. It almost has a certain sourness to it. Mm. I've never had a heart this rare before. It's so soft. Should we try some liver? Yep. Oh, wow. This is looking more gnarly. Cheers. Crunchy sand, mm. soft, half cooked. You can feel the tissues themselves kind of ripping apart as you run your teeth through them. It's kind of buttery. Stop it, man. Stop. Like a really smooth texture other than yep. the sand. It just melts in the mouth. I'm usually a hard guy. That liver is actually better than the heart. That's blowing my mind. The liver isn't the only treasure. It's more cooked. Organ. Right now, Clint's mother, Gloria, is preparing a traditional offal entree using the kangaroo stomach. She chops got something like this in the UK when they fill the, the sheep stomach with the what's it with the ingredient? What is it, dang, what's it called? Kidneys, spleen, and liver into chunks. Add some kangaroo backstraps. The backbone meat is normally tender. Mix well with diced oh, yeah, onions, right. potatoes, garlic powder, salt, pepper, and oil. Now, all that must be- Okay, grandma out here seasoning stuff. Now, this is- I eat this. Because she didn't put the seasoning on it. It looked like- you know what I'm saying? It transferred to the stomach. Just make sure the first lot go right down to fill the bottom up. This is where it gets So you get the end of the skin goes around the bottom, then you stuff your stomach back into itself. So it stops okay. it from spilling out. She then secures it shut with a stick and grills it on cinders to harden and secure the stomach's shape. Wrap it in tin foil and place it inside an impromptu oven with heat hitting it from below mm. and above. I notice that the kangaroo. Yeah, see, now this looks like a more traditional type situation. It has to be prepared the same way every time underground. But with the organs, there's more flexibility, right? Yes. And so if you're not cooking the organs inside a stomach, what are you doing with them? We can put them in stews, fry them, and just make a damper and eat it like that. Sounds good. Well, this is the biggest damper I've ever seen. I've only seen that two. piece of bread damp thing look damper look good. Do though. <laughs> Slicing it down the middle, and there's just like big, beautiful, coarse pieces of everything all mixed together. What's awesome about stomach cooking is it when it gets hot, it constricts and it squeezes everything together like a sausage. It's more like a pie. Do you think it's more like a pie or like a round sausage? It's like a pie to me. Uh, oh, the Australians are ganging up on me. <laughs> do you put that on top of the bread? Yes, we do. Oh, there we go. Let's try it out. 
Oh, it's delicious. The meat is like beautifully steamed in there. I love the way it's cooked from all sides. Usually when I see people uh, you know, doing outdoor cooking, they might just put the heat underneath, but mm. they've got the heat above, they got heat below, and it creates kind of like a oven. steam convection oven inside. This is a heavy meal. A damp is so thick. I don't think you could eat a couple. It's like a um, air fryer. For more slices of this. <laughs> no. It's just such dense bread and then rich, strong meat. I got some of the skin of the stomach. That's rubbery. We like chewy. Yeah, it's a big mix of textures. Where'd you learn this recipe from? From my mom. Been handed down to her. From her mom. From the time that you were a child until now, are people eating less game meats? Are you eating less game meats? No, I love my game meat. Most of my people. This is cool, man. I like to learn about the Aboriginal people, man. They deserve to have the spotlight shined on them. We still eat our game meat. My grandmother, before she died, she used to always crave a bush tucker. Mm -hmm. Always want a kangaroo. So we'd have to go out hunting and specifically get a kangaroo. Wow, it's amazing. I do love that that's still mm -hmm. such a, a core thing, you know? It's not like ordering a pizza. No. no. It takes a bit more investment than that. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of effort, but once you've cooked it and you do it right, the meal, as you can see, is quite delicious. After two hours of steadily building anticipation, the time has come to unearth the kangaroos. Kangaroo for dinner is still wild. I mean, the cooked marsupials are placed over a thicket of wattle leaves. The question on everyone's mind, did we succeed or did we fail? There's only we one, to succeed. one way to find out. It looks... Good? Is this how it's supposed to look? Yep. They look like, what's that volcano that erupted and everyone was like, no! And then they were frozen forever and they got put in a museum. Pompeii. Yeah, they look like that. And the smell coming off here, it is like a thick, gamey steam. It's also like a mix of burnt flesh and burnt hair and cooked meat. It would make the worst Yankee candle ever. Do you know Yankee <laughs> candles? No. No, okay. Sorry, my bad. We have two kangaroos here. Which one is the one that was shot yesterday? I ain't even gonna lie to you, my boy. Like, I couldn't do it. Like, I, don't present it to me like this. Like, bring me a plate a with some garnishes. You know what I'm saying? With some dips. You know what I'm saying? With a little bit of the, with a little bit of the bread. You know what I'm saying? Like, some side dishes. A plain kangaroo. Oh, wow. You're just going right into basically the thigh. Oh, dude, that is way more juicy than I thought looking at the outside. Yes. Whoa, oh, that looks incredible. Right. The musculature looks like no other animal I've seen before. Okay. Look like roast, Sunday roast. Or it's just going in every other direction. You can see the striations of the meat. Is this well done? Medium rare, I say you need to cook it. Oh, that is hot, hot, hot. And it looks quite chewy and super lean. Let's try it out. Dude, how is that so tender for something that's so lean? Mm -hmm. You just bite straight through that. I thought that was going to be one of the chewier meats. It's the leg of right. the freaking animal that jumps. It's somehow gushy, but there's no discernible fat located. Okay, and the, see, I was worried about it that it was gonna be tough too. And he said medium rare, but like they know what they doing. I'm trying to I'm, let's go to the back strap, like the lady said. They said that's a good spot. It in here at all. I think venison is probably the most accurate close comparison in that it has that kind of wild flavor. This is one of the least gamey game meats you could get. I totally agree. <laughs> The meat is chopped into chunks and shared with everyone. From succulent leg meat, juicy loin cuts, tender ribs, and flavorful shoulder pieces. Oops. Good catch. Good catch. It's a phenomenal. You're an athlete. At one point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Safe. <laughs> this is from the kangaroo that was struck by a vehicle. Definitely tougher and a little bit more gamey. A tinge of a sheep flavor. Every new creature brings with it a new experience. It looked really good. I'm not going to lie. Like, but bring it to me like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, in a little, some, in, in a gravy or whatever. And sometimes you can compare it to a different animal, sometimes you can't. And this, I didn't know what to expect either, but the way it's cooked and the fact that it just came off the fire, they're right. both still very palatable, for sure. Each cut has its own unique texture and taste, but there's one part everyone clamors for, the kangaroo tail. And I'm about to find out why. Gloria? Probably similar to oxtail. Put that thing, cook that thing up. What? Okay, talk to me. Yes. Do you have any room left in your tummy? No, I don't think so. Oh, you don't think so? All right, well, me and Andrew can take over then. We've got some tail right here. It's not the most alien junk it's, of meat you've ever it's seen. It's hair, there's skin, there's yeah. fat, there's a bone in the middle, like we're eating oxtail soup. What you do is you just peel the skin off and then you take a bite from the meatiest part of the flesh. Oh, do you like this part, the fat? Yeah. 
Oh my god, that is so good. It's real tender. I can imagine. I can imagine. It looked like oxtail a little bit. Mm. The fat just melts, man. It's like it's covered in butter. This is a world of food I knew nothing about. I knew that the folks that ate kangaroo in Australia, I assumed they would like grind the meat up and maybe put it into a hamburger or something like that. <laughs> but keeping the tails <laughs> serving them whole is not what I- Kangaroo, bro said kangaroo burger. Oh man, you wild. This is tough. This is real tough. I expected. It's kind of surreal because I'd eaten kangaroo before from the supermarket, but I've never tasted anything like this tail. From the supermarket? Can I go get some? For sure, you know, you could serve that in any restaurant. This day's been fascinating being able to talk to you about food, but also about your culture and where you come from in all of Australia. How many different indigenous groups are there? Aboriginals are not one people. Before Europeans arrived, it's believed there were over 500 different Aboriginal clans. Even today, there's over 350 across the whole continent, and Western Australia has over 124. Clint's family and his greater community are across of the Ngarluma and Yinji Barndi people. Because they look different than the ones in Spanian's videos. Known for their history the people in Spain's of hunting and distinct art forms like rock paintings. What do you think makes the food of your people so unique? It's the most Australian food you can possibly get. It's actually from the continent of Australia. You won't find it anywhere else on the planet. How has life changed for the Aboriginal community here from the time you were a child until now? When I was a child, we used to go out all the time, out bush. But nowadays it's different. It's, it's the drugs, the alcohol affecting most of our people. And, you know, the diets, the sodas, cool drinks sweet stuff. That's why most of us don't live up to a certain age. They get diabetes and heart attacks and stuff like that. And the biggest part is because of the convenience, you know, you know we can drive. I gotta get back in shape. Like, it's not like I'm out of shape, but like that, like, it'd be what I'd be eating be crazy. Having a motor car, we can shop at the shop, we can get takeout and all that sort of stuff. So for us in this area, we try to balance out our diet with our traditional diet as well as what we're eating in this modern setting. You know, So at least we're getting some of this to even it out a bit. Gloria, if you were the president of Koratha, what could be done differently to help stop this issue of uh, these addictions that people are facing? Is there any solution for that? I guess there's no solution, but there could be prevention. I would introduce um, daily trips out bush. Instead of young fellows or whoever, indigenous people going to prison, they get rehabilitated out in the land and they'll be able to learn how to hunt rather than sending them to rehab. Focusing on rehabilitation instead of just punishment. Mm. Yes, that's exactly right. That's beautiful. Thank you also, Gloria, for joining us yeah, today. Thank you. It was a pleasure speaking with you. And Thanks, Gloria. Tomorrow, we got a lot more in store. Boom. All right, we are in the water. I can't see anything. How the hell did you see this, Eliza? Well done, bro. This is Stingray. We're getting our get back for Steve Irwin. Yes, sir. Best ever food review show is a small team of independent creators. Mm -hmm. That's it. I'm not gonna lie to you. I only came here for kangaroo, so I'm pretty much done. It's been interesting, man. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, man. Let me know if you've ever had kangaroo. I'm gone. Kangaroo.